Welcome Northeast Conference fans to our latest NEC Now podcast on the NEC Overtime Pod. Today I am joined by St. Francis Brooklyn's head women's basketball coach, Linda Simino. Today we will be discussing the role of women in collegiate athletics, gender equity in women's basketball, and Coach Sim's career up until this point. Coach, thank you so much for being here today. No, it's great. It's great to be here and it's a great um, topic um, for a good discussion, so I'm happy to be a part of it. Great. Um, So let's just jump in. You began your college coaching career at the age of 22 as the head coach of Queensborough Community College. And since then, you've never been an assistant. That's a very untraditional route. Can you talk a bit about your unique path and what made you want to go down the coaching route? Um, Actually, I did have one year as an assistant at my alma mater of Adelphi, but um, that was a brief stint. And I worked for someone named Kelly Watts, who was tremendous. But um, I've had a great career. I've, I've um, been fortunate enough to surround myself with some really smart people and um, some people that I was able to be a sponge off of and learn from. Um, and uh, I've had the opportunity to watch a lot of practices and just take part in a lot of different um clinics and uh, go to conventions and just kind of meet people. So I think that my journey's been a little different because I've been a head coach most of my career, um, but I was also an administrator as an associate AD in SWA. So I think that whole combination has kind of uh, shaped and molded me into who I am today as a professional. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Um, Your first two years at St. Francis have been incredibly noteworthy. During the 2018-2019 season, you set the St. Francis women's basketball record for conference wins and ended up finishing third in the league. Then in 2019-2020, you hit that 200 career wins mark. How have you been able to kind of adjust to this role in Brooklyn and really lead your team? Well, we have a great staff. Um, I have some former players on our staff and some really um, dedicated uh, individuals. And then our players have just really embraced um, and been receptive to what we want to do as a program and as a staff. Uh, I'm very fortunate enough to work for Irma Garcia, somebody who I've looked up to. And um, she's been a tremendous uh, mentor and role model for me personally. Uh, and so when you go to work every day and you have somebody that you trust that you can bounce ideas off of, um, makes it a lot easier, especially in the transition coming from the America East and Northeast Conference and coming from, you know, it coming to Bingham, uh, from Binghamton and now to Brooklyn, uh, living in the city, um, being back here um, around, you know, the people that I know. Um, so I definitely think that it's just about who you surround yourself with. And I've been very fortunate enough to have really good people around me. So right now the NEC is the only division one conference where all women's basketball teams are led by female coaches. Why do you think the NEC has been so successful in promoting gender equity in this way? Well, it starts from the top down, right? So we have a tremendous um, commissioner in Noreen Morris. And um, when you're led by a female, and then we have uh, quite a few women athletic directors. um, But I think it's about respect. You know, I've sat in at those meetings where the director of athletics are. And um, it seems to me that all the ADs really value and respect the opinions of the SWAs um, and also of the coaches in the league. And so I think there's that sense of camaraderie. Um, You know, all of my stops, I've seen that. I've seen strong leadership from the athletic directors and from the commissioners. Um, But it is pretty cool to be in a conference um, where, you know, all the head coaches are women. And and, um, for us, it's, uh, it's definitely a blessing. I mean, we have our, we have a, all female staff as well um, this year. So I think that when you, um, you can put yourself in a position that you can be role models for other young women um, and they have somebody to look up to. Um, But I think like, you know, to go back to your question, it's all about leadership. And I, and I think that we have strong leadership. Yeah, that's great. Um, And as the chair of the NEC women's basketball coaches, how do you think this representation impacts the female student athletes? Well, like I just said, I mean, our, our coaches all get along. Um, we all support each other. We re- respect each other. Obviously, you're competitive on the court. You're competitive within recruiting. Um, but at the end of the day, when you sit at the table, we all have the same common goals. And we all value each other. Um, and we support each other. So I think it's bigger than basketball. And I think that when your players, your student athletes can see that you can be competitive for 40 minutes, but then that you can shake someone's hand and have a 
conversation with them and really value their opinion and respect them. I think that goes a long way. And I think that our coaches in our league do a good job of that. Um, and, you know, even after a tough loss or a good win at a conference win, you'll hear from different coaches in the league. And I think it's, it's great that we support each other the way that we do. Um, and so I think that definitely sets the tone for our young student athletes as well. Yeah, definitely. It's great to hear that, like you're seeing that out on the court. Um, so you mentioned before that your entire staff is female and notably three of your assistants have previously played for you. Kennedy Thompson, Jessica Kosha, and Alyssa Ewing James. What has it meant for you to be able to offer these opportunities to the next generation of the game? Yeah, and ironically, Jen Liam, our associate head coach, her sister played for me so um, <laughs> and, and worked with me. Um, I think that when you sit down and you talk to young women when you recruit them and you say, what are your goals? What are your dreams? Um, what do you want to do? If they want to have a career in athletics, I always tell them that, you know, I will show them a path and I will provide them with an opportunity. And if I can't provide them personally with an opportunity on our staff, then, you know, I'll ask one of my friends and, and through networking, find them an opportunity. But um, I've had 12 former players work with me on our staff. And um, I think it's a good chance for them to put, you know, their first foot in the doorway to college athletics. And then they can decide if this is for them, if they want to go down the administrative route or the coaching um, route. But uh, it's definitely something that's rewarding for me. Um, it's like a proud mom moment, even though they're like my children, um, for them to, um, to grow and develop and mature uh first as student athletes but then as young professionals um and then watch them you know flourish in their career so i'm, I'm very proud of them i'm very proud of the fact that um they still want to be around me uh and learn from me and i'm always learning every day from them as well so even though i might be their coach for who they played for um i learn from them every day mm -hmm. and yeah that number 12 that's so many and that's really a testament to what you you're building great um so you've worked under two female commissioners, um, Amy Huckthausen at the America East while you were um, at Binghamton, and now the NEC's commissioner, Noreen Morris. What influence have you seen these women have on their member institutions and student athletes? Wow, I can't say enough about Amy and Noreen. They both are just tremendous women in this business. Um, you know, not just in our in our conference, in, in my former conference in America East, but on a national level with their involvement with the NCAA on many committees. Um, they're the type of commissioners that are hands-on, that are active, that you can have conversations with, that you can ask advice um, from. Um, they want their female, especially their female coaches, um, to be successful. They're really supportive of um, the whole, you know, women's in leadership positions um, on a national level. Um, I remember having many conversations with Amy um, and now with Noreen and, you know, to be able to just lean on them, um, to be able to watch them flourish in their careers and in their roles, I think is, um, is very helpful to us. Um, to our administration and then for our student athletes, you know, um, when people are in powerful positions, such as a commissioner's role, when they're hands on and, you know, they're familiar faces around the league, like the student athletes know who they are, I think it goes a long way. And then when on top of that, the fact that they're women, um, it's, and they're respected, you know, so widely in this business, I think that it's, it's awesome for our conferences. Yeah, definitely. That's great to hear. Um, so you're very involved with progressing women's basketball as a whole, seeing as you chair the NCAA Women's Basketball Rules Committee. Where would you like to see the game of, you know, collegiate women's basketball progress to over the next few years? And where do you think you and St. Francis fit into that goal? Well, I know as a whole in uh, women's basketball, I've, I've been able to see um, a lot, right, behind the scenes mm -hmm. as the chair of the, the Rules Committee, sitting in at the NCAA um, headquarters, going to these meetings, meeting a lot of different folks from all over the country. Um, you learn and you also see, um, you know, how many different people are part of this game. It's not just the coaches, right? We have the administrators and we have the officials and we have the people um, behind the scenes. So um, I think one of our topics of conversation now on a national level is parity in women's basketball, right? So they want to see more parity and, and we're discussing ways that we can increase the parity in women's basketball and, you know, what we can do um, to help that. Um, we talk about that. So w w in terms of um, St. Francis, Brooklyn and um, 
uh, on a national level with the NCAA, you know, obviously we want to be a, a league leader. We want to lead the NEC. We want to, you know, we want to um, win. You know, we want to win championships. We want to represent. Um, but I also think that for our conference and St. Francis included in our conference, um, we want to win our non-conference games. We want we want the NEC to get noticed on a national level to win a couple of those guarantee games, um, to make it into the NCAA tournament and to win a first round game. You know, to advance in that NCAA tournament and not just be happy getting there and I think that uh, you know me personally as a coach in this league I take responsibility of our program um, to get us to that level but I know that all the other coaches in the conference feel the same way so we're one unit when it comes down to it um, on a national level and we want the NEC um, you know to progress um, as a conference within that NCAA tournament. Yeah, definitely. And that's what we want to see as well. That's for sure. But um, it's just like a kind of an off topic question. But out of curiosity, how have you and the team been adjusting to like, you know, all the everything that's going on and not being able to proceed with your season as you would traditionally expect it to and just staying connected and all of that? How has that been for you? Well, I'm sure everybody's handling it um, differently. Um, for us, we're, you know, right in the heart of New York City. Um, so we, we got hit hard really early on. Um, but then our team is unique as well because we have seven international student athletes. So uh, we're dealing with all different time zones and, and, um, and whatnot. But I think that we've made the best of it. We try to find a silver lining every day in everything that we do. And I think that our staff has talked about the fact that we've grown closer as a program. You know, we're communicating more. Um, we're, we're talking about things that we didn't really talk about before as co Coaches, we're getting to know another side of our of our players. They're getting to know another side of us. Um, but you know, we know that there's a challenge ahead, and we're going to make the most of it and and do what we can do from our end um, to help you know our school and, and to help within our league. But you know, it is what it is at this point. You know, and so um, there's no need to have negative feelings or to be um, pessimistic about it. What we're trying to do is stay optimistic and. Um, see what we can do and then do what we can do to the best of our ability and go from there. Yeah, it's, it's great to hear that you're keeping that positive mindset and really just pushing through. Um, and just by way of wrap up, do you have any like kind of final advice or words of encouragement for young women looking to enter collegiate athletics? My advice would be that it's important to stay true to your values and not to compromise who you are as a person. Um, you know, I, I'm a woman of integrity and whatever I do, I always try to do the right thing and you're never wrong to do the right thing. So I do um, offer the advice to young women trying to get into athletics that, you know, find somebody that you can be honest with, that you trust, um, that can be a mentor to you um, that won't always tell you what you want to hear. And sometimes they'll have the hard, uncomfortable conversations with you. Um, but somebody that, you know, can can show you the right way uh, and to do things the right way. Um, and, you know, I've been blessed with many great great uh, mentors throughout the way. Um, and, you know, networking is not just networking, it's actually building and cultivating relationships with people. So uh, my advice would be, um, you know, just that to develop, uh, you know, solid relationships with people who you can help and who they can help you as well. Yeah, and it definitely seems like you're like developing those within your own staff and players. So it is really, really great to hear. That was St. Francis Brooklyn's women's basketball head coach, Linda Simino, and this has been NEC Now.